Well, hello and welcome, guys. I've got something a little bit different here. Gonna be kind of another audiobook. I don't know if I'll read everything that's posted in this series, or, um... If I'll just do this one and move on, I'm still not sure. This is the... It's, um, a web series called Nothing But Fluff and Smoke. It's presented by Harebrained Schemes and Shadowrun Returns. It's written by Malik Toms, and the story is by Jordan Wiseman. I'll have a link to the Tumblr page where this is posted down in the description. This is part, I believe, um... I, I don't know how well it's connected to Harebrained Schemes and the Shadowrun Returns, but there's a new story, uh, a new chapter, I guess, posted every Friday. And again, I don't know if I'll read all of them or not. There's only five at this point in time, and uh, I I'm honestly not even sure if I can read and post these. Um, but I want to. It seems like it could be fun, something fun to do. So I'm just going to read this one and post it up. And again, I don't know if I'll read the chapters after this one. I'll post a link in the description, though. And if you like the story... Uh, you can go ahead and go read it yourself. It, again, it's based kind. It's based on Shadowrun. It's based in uh, the Shadowrun universe, and uh, it is cyberpunk. So here we go. Part one: old friends and new business. Cat could think of better ways to spend her Saturday night than being tailed by orc gangers. They were behind her now. Red leather jackets and pink mohawks blending into the chaotic mesh of bodies moving through downtown Seattle. She knew what they wanted. A pound of flesh. Her cyber deck. The usual. It all came back to the Gunderson run. That job covered rent for the month and left enough for decent takeout, but it meant crossing the Crimson Crush. Apparently they didn't understand just business. She sped up and her limp became more pronounced. Dr. Maplethorpe called the pain psychosomatic, a memory of having her leg meat gnashed off by teeth as large as her body. Dragon teeth. Of course, her doctor also worked out of the back of a strip mall. So what did he know? Cat glanced back, pretending to notice a glitzy neon storefront. The orcs were still with her. She pulled her satchel closer, feeling for the important items within. Sega CTY-360 Cyberdeck, Cult L-36 Pistol, Stun Baton, Comlink, and Lipstick. Everything a woman of the 2050s needs. It was too late to double back and lose them. She had a meat to make. Maybe they wouldn't follow her into matchsticks. The club was officially Halloweener turf. Then again, they'd strayed this far from Redmond already. She ducked into the club. A few moments later, the orcs followed. Matchsticks was hot and crowded. Rise Corlett manned the bar. All the regulars were there. Mr. McDougal, Alex Bain, Doug Hall... She hoped that acknowledging them would send a message to the orcs that this was her turf. That message was received. The gangers stayed put at the front where they could see her and she could see them. Latin fusion blared from speakers stacked like crates at the corners of a small stage near the back. She headed that way, towards a dwarven man lounging in a booth beside the stage. The music was so loud here that it was hard to hear anything more than a few inches away, which is why her fixer always met here. Cat slumped into the booth across from the dwarf. She didn't waste any time on small talk. So, what are you sending me after this time? Cyber zombies? Ghouls? Toxic shamans? Elves. Is that all? Julius Strouther looked as serious as the trim-cut suit he wore. His age-lined face offered no hint of mirth. The smile lingering at the corner of her lips started to dissolve. Strouther said, How would you like a chance to knock Atine down a few pegs? Atine. 
Had it really been two years since her encounter with the dragon? Cat absently rubbed at her cybernetic leg. You know that I do. Tell me how it works. Strouther leaned in, his voice conspiratorial. You can't go at a dragon head on. You have to do this in stages. My client set several small goals, and if you can make the first one, we'll go for another. Hate doesn't pay the bills, so she screwed on a smirk and said, So what's the rate for dealing with a dragon? Strouther negotiated a fair price for the run. He needed her to track down a group of ancients, someone hired to geek a nan official, stop them, figure out who hired them, and unravel the Ateen connection. There was more, but her attention kept drifting. She couldn't see the pink mohawks anymore. Her business concluded, Kat slipped out of her seat and fell in step with a group of women headed towards the bathroom. Then she saw a pink mohawk standing by the front door. He didn't see her, so Kat kept walking, right out the back door and into the alley. The other orc wasn't in the alley. Out here, Seattle smelled like cigarette smoke and rotten eggs. Kat breathed in the city's aroma. In the distance, the Renraku arcology dominated the skyline. She wondered for a moment what it must be like to grow up in the protective shell of a corporation, far from the gang bangers and street urchins that made up the Seattle she knew. Kat heard a low sound like a cross between a cry and a strangled growl, rising from beneath the dumpster. Glowing eyes stared back out at her. It was a kitten, a skinny thing with matted white fur. Cat smiled at the poor creature and rustled through her satchel until she found a half-eaten candy bar. You look hungry. Cat kept a hand on her stun baton. Even kittens could be dangerous things if you didn't know how to deal with them. She left the bar on the ground. Cautiously, the kitten came out to sniff at it. Satisfied, it licked at the chocolate greedily. Cat took a closer look. The kitten's white fur wasn't just matted. It was burned. Someone had put a flame to this kitten. She felt her stomach clench. Suddenly, the kitten hissed at her. She took a half-step backwards and tightened her grip on the stun baton. It hissed again, showing fangs, but it wasn't looking at her. Cat heard the footsteps then. The second ganger was right on top of her. She reflexively jabbed the stun baton into his gut. The baton sparked, and the air filled with the stench of burning flesh. He went down to his knees, and she jabbed him again in the neck. Cat turned back to look for that kitten. It was sitting beside the candy bar, licking itself. She reached out for the kitten, and it climbed into her arms. You saved my hoop, kitty. The least I could do was give you a bowl of milk.